Good morning. I'm Pastor Brian Munt here at Richfield Lutheran Church in South Minneapolis. With me today are MB as Assisting Minister, Paul on the organ, and Mary as our vocalist. This Sunday's image of how the risen Christ shares his life with us is the image of the vine. Christ the vine and we the branches are alive in each other in the mystery of mutual abiding as described in the gospel. Baptism makes us a part of Christ's living and life-giving self and makes us alive with Christ's life. As the vine brings food to the branches, Christ feeds us at his table. We are sent out to bear fruit for the life of the world. Our prelude is Adagio by Mendelssohn. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Our gathering song is Now the Green Blade Rises. Now 
the green blade rises from the buried grave. We eat that in a dark earth many days has lain. Love lives again that with the dead has been. Love is come again like wheat are rising. When our hearts are wintry, grieving or in pain, your touch can call us back to life again. Fields of our hearts that dead and bare have been, love is come again like wheat of rising green. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. you. Let us pray. O oh God, God, you give us your Son as a divine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of our love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel for today is John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. On the night of his arrest, Jesus taught his disciples about the relationship they would have with him. Those who abide in his word and love bear fruit, for apart from him they can do nothing. This is the Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine. and My father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. This is the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. When you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One of the things I just hate about being a homeowner is when storms knock trees down. I mean, I love my trees. I just love to, to sit and look at them, the, the tops swaying and the gentle winds. And so I mourn their loss when a tree loses big branches or maybe if it's even knocked down. And then to add insult to injury. I mean, then you got hard work to get those broken limbs down and chopped up to say nothing of getting a new tree growing in its place. I mean, if we lose a tree. And those darn silver maples, they are the worst. I mean, no matter how strong a summer storm or not, it seems those silver maple branches just can't wait to leap off their tree and strew themselves all over the yard. One late summer, several years ago, uh, the big silver maple in the backyard lost two huge branches. And the silver maple on the side of the house lost branches too. Uh, and you know what? Now, here's the surprising thing that ties in with today's gospel. Those downed branches all died, all by themselves, even before I got around to cutting them up. There they were lying in the yard, and they died. Their leaves dried up and shriveled. The sap, the sap stopped flowing within them. Those downed branches were dead. Now, it should be obvious that branches, when separated from the tree, die. They cannot live apart from the tree. And no way, it's just not going to happen. Another thing about those late summer storms, 
They knock apples from the apple tree all over the front yard. There are so many, you would think that the tree would run out of apples, but no. As many as I pick up, when the next storm comes, there's even more on the ground. That apple tree bears so many apples. It's just bent over from the weight of all its fruit. And you know, I don't do anything to that apple tree to encourage it. I mean, it just keeps on bearing fruit. I guess you could say it's in its DNA. It just does what a fruit tree does. It bears fruit. Hmm. Now, here's an odd story that ties in with our gospel reading, too. I mean, so years ago, sometime before World War II, Oli was a bachelor farmer who lived out in the country. His driveway was two narrow grooves of dirt separated by tall grass. Oli was a subsistence farmer. He raised everything he needed right there on his farm. Not surprisingly then, he didn't get out much. I mean, he had no need to. And besides, his chores and his animals kept him busy from sun up to sundown. And he was rightfully proud of his big draft horses that did all his plowing and field work. One Saturday in December, Pastor Knutson arranged a trip into Minneapolis so everyone could see all the downtown storefronts decorated with the Christmas lights and to see the Christmas show at Dayton's department store. Pastor even arranged for the youth to hold down the farms so bachelor farmers like Oli could go. Oli couldn't believe his eyes. Such beautiful things he saw. He was captivated by the, the many lights, the, the many colors, and so tiny, and how they blinked off and on like lightning bugs of many colors. But in the winter, now he couldn't bring much home with him, and he had little money to waste on such frivolities. But he marveled at these electric lights that he saw everywhere. So he bought a sack full of strings of Christmas lights with switches so he could turn them on and off. Arriving home, he hung the Christmas lights outside his farmstead on his trees. At Christmas, or at church rather, at church the next morning, Oli invited everyone over to come that by that evening. And everyone watched him with curiosity and wondered what he was up to, but, but Oli just smiled and said, Yes, you've ate until dark, then you'll see. When night came, with a glint in his eyes, Oli turned on the switches, one after another. But nothing happened. Here's the thing. This was before electrification had come to the country, and, well, Oli didn't know or understand about electricity. He didn't know that the light bulbs were useless unless they were connected to the source of their power. Unless you plug in the lights and leave them plugged in, they won't come to life. They're not going to do what they were created to do. Without an ongoing connection to their power source, they are just a disappointment, or in Oli's case, an embarrassment. Jesus says the same about us. Unless you abide in Jesus, that is, stay connected to Jesus, you will die. Apart from Jesus, true life just is not possible. Any more than it is for a broken branch off of a tree or, or uh, for all these Christmas lights. When you abide in Jesus, when you stay connected to Jesus, you will bear fruit. Just as it is in the fruit tree's DNA to bear fruit, so it is in our DNA as disciples of Jesus to bear fruit. And what is our fruit? To love one another. Just as the fruit tree just naturally bears fruit, so Jesus' love surges and flows through us to all the world. It's only natural. Bearing fruit is why farmers plant fruit trees. And the same as this goes with grapevines in Jesus' image here. The people wanted grapes to eat and to make into wine for themselves and to sell for other people to eat and drink. And that's why they grow the grapevines. Well, I suppose they're pretty in their own way but they are grown because they bear grapes. And to keep them yielding grapes, they need to be pruned regularly. In pruning a vine, two principles are observed. The dead branches must be ruthlessly removed, and the live branches must be cut back drastically. Now we do that because, well, the dead branches bear insects and disease and, and might cause the vine to rot to say nothing of them being unproductive and unsightly. 
and the lime branches must be trimmed back in order to prevent such heavy growth that the life of the vine goes into making the branches woody rather than making fruit. In the early spring, the vineyards look like this collection of barren, bleeding stumps. But in the fall, they are filled with lush purple grapes. As the vine grower wields the pruning knife on his vines, so God cuts dead branches from among his church and often cuts back the living branches so far that his methods maybe even seem cruel. Nevertheless, from such pruning comes abundant fruitfulness. Jesus tells us that God is our vine grower. Sorry. Jesus tells us that God is our vine grower. And lest that we grow wooden, too rigid to bear fruit, God regularly prunes us back. And this pruning results in us bearing more fruit, Jesus' love flowing through us. Now, I don't know about you, but I am the grim reaper when it comes to pruning. I just don't know when to stop. I know they say we're not supposed to top trees anymore, but that's what it looks like by the time I'm done. One year, my son Kyle bought me a bonsai tree for Father's Day. It was so cute, and it was just the right size to keep in my desk. Now, these little bonsai trees, they're real live trees, and they need to be regularly pruned. Now, this is supposed to be calming and, and centering, uh, zen-like, because you're supposed to be at one with the tree as you prune it. Well, you know, I don't think that little tree made it through the summer the way I over-pruned it. Thankfully, I am not our vine dresser. God is our vine dresser. He is the one who prunes us, you and me and us as a community of faith. And since God is also our creator, well, you can say he's at one with us as he prunes us. Still, being pruned is not a, comf a particularly comforting image, is it? But did you notice how Jesus says God prunes us? I mean, it's right there in verse 3. You have already been cleansed by the word. I wish they'd translate Jesus' little word play here differently. Because the word Jesus uses means both cleanse and prune. Maybe to translate it, prune would make the connection to his image of the vine and the branches crystal clear. Jesus says that God prunes us with the word. He doesn't use pruning shears to cut us back. He, he does not send troubles or hard times or natural disasters or violence or disease. I suppose they can be used as opportunities for growth, but no. God uses the word, the Bible. As Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 puts it, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow, it is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And so, just as the vine dresser regularly prunes his vines every season, so God, our vine dresser, needs to regularly immerse us in his word, pruning us so we bear fruit. Now, knowing the entire Bible by heart and understanding it so well you can explain every single verse is of little use unless that word penetrates your inner being, like the rain penetrates the tiniest roots of a tree in order to fill the whole tree and bring, bring forth leaves and fruit. This pruning with the word must be an ongoing, regular thing, such as hearing the word every Sunday at church, daily quiet time with the word, regular Bible study with other disciples. One more thing about vines and branches and fruit trees they do not continuously bear fruit, month after month after month. I mean, again, that should be obvious. But this is something we forget when we apply Jesus' image to our life, uh, individually or as a congregation. As Ecclesiastes puts it, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time for growth and bearing fruit and a time for rest and for pruning. Growth is not a continuous, always-on kind of thing, at least not in the farming images Jesus uses. Only cancer grows continuously until it bursts the host 
No, that kind of growth is neither sustainable nor healthy. It's such explosive growth is neither desirable nor biblical. No, there is this regular cycle of rest from growth, a time for pruning, for future growth, and yielding fruit. So abide. Abide in Jesus. Remember your baptism. Abide in Jesus. Remember that you have been grafted to his vine through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Abide in Jesus. Plant your roots deep in God's love. Tap into that living water. Abide in Jesus, and the fruit will come. The fruit will come, not because of what you do, but because of that life source that's flowing in and through you. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Our hymn of the day is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God with promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church, and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they may lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all, especially the family and friends of Russ Carlson, the family and friends of Andy Sherry, Sam Dupree, the Kahn family, Stacy Bessonen, Frank Diffley, Emily, and all those whom we name in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You gather with us, with all the saints, by the power of your spirit, especially with Russ, Andy, and those whom we name before you. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You can support this and other of God's ministries through Richfield Lutheran Church today through our website, richfield-lutheran.org. Thank you for your generosity. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Join us here again next Sunday when our gospel reading will be John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. On the night of his arrest, Jesus delivers a final testimony to his disciples to help them in the days ahead. Here, he repeats the most important of all his commands, that they love one another. And remember that this Sunday, May 2nd, you have three worship options. In addition to watching this pre-recorded service, you can worship in person here in the sanctuary on Sunday, May 2nd at 9.15 in the morning. And you can join the 1045 Zoom worship on Sunday morning at 1045. Until then, go forth with God's blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing. risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Our postlude today is Oh That I Had a Thousand Voices by Paul Moss. Mm -hmm. 